Welcome, my friends. Let's not beat around the bush and let's talk about Magma Tempest. So Magma Tempest was one of the best abilities in the game, doing 5x5 AoE for 8 hits of 5% to 25% damage. When you pair this with the Fractal Staff of Armadale, or FSOA, which fires off extra auto attacks when you do critical hits, each attack having their own dedicated role to proc more autos make Magma Tempest incredibly powerful and synergistic with FSOA and Tsunami. And FSOA is probably the most game-breaking item in the game with insane damage. Magma Tempest only adds to that pile. Just yesterday, in addition to making a revolution-friendly version that just goes when used with no manual targeting, Dagus has changed Magma Tempest in two ways. The maximum hit was reduced from 25% to 19%, and it can no longer crit. Now, I'm not gonna mince words here. That's an incredibly crazy nerf, and indeed, a harsher nerf than the Greater Rickshaw nerf a couple of months ago. However, at the same time, Magma Tempest has gone from game-breaking with FSOA to a pretty good basic ability with this nerf, also like Greater Ricochet. So people should stop throwing around dead ability or Magma Tempest is useless and stuff like that. Because let's face it, it's still worth using, just not within FSOA because it cannot crit. But let's elaborate. Within FSOA, Magma Tempest should generally be avoided because it's not a terribly good ability with the spec. We can rule out that ability for FSOA users almost completely because it can't crit anymore. However, I am very confident in saying that the majority of players watching this video simply do not own FSOA because, well, it's mega expensive. What would the nerf mean for you? Let's go back to the news post for a second here. Jagas has given out numbers of their own explanation of the nerf, but it doesn't tell the entire story. The news post does not have key elements like Elder Overloads, Prayer most likely, and more importantly, Inventure Perks, and there are other miscellaneous details to bring up as well. Yes, it's never indeed quite that simple. First up, if you take the news post at face value, you see that the minimum hits both pre-nerf and post-nerf are the same. This is technically true, but in practice not really because of invention perks. See, both precise and equilibrium increase the minimum hit based off the max hit and damage range between min and max hit respectively. Long story short, which you can go read about on the RuneScape wiki, because both precise and equilibrium uses that, that means the minimum hit of Magma Tempest is now a tiny bit lower than before. Not something super noteworthy, but it exists all the same. Second off, not every boost was used. Stuff like Smoke Cloud won't affect Magma Tempest now while it did before. Crit boosts, like Biting and Reaver's Ring, would not work at all. And abilities that have crit bonuses like Greater Fury or Greater Concentrated Blast are completely wasted on Magma Tempest. That being said, you can still get crits off with Greater Concentrated Blast into another ability, so don't worry too much about that. There's a possibility Magma Tempest still eats some Greater Concentrated Blast buffs though, so keep that in mind. Because of all this, we'll be switching to different numbers both PVME and myself have gathered up from testing, both pre-nerf and post-nerf. For clarity, I am using this setup with a maniacal aura. As you can see here, pre-nerf Magma Tempest was insanely good and rivaled even Greater Concentrated Blast on a base level, then adding in those crits for FSOA spec destroys literally everything. Right now, Magma Tempest sits around here which does place it below Greater Concentrated Blast, but still comfortably ahead Drag Breath, just like what the news post says. Keep in mind, however, that in this next image, I will now be giving Drag Breath all the buffs it can possibly get here. Smoke Cloud, Crits, using after Greater Concentrated Blast, stuff like that. And it can only beat Magma Tempest by using a Dragon Rider amulet, but let's face it, basically no one was using that as a switch for a couple years by this point. That being said, there are even more things to learn that both favor and hinder this comparison between Dragon Breath and Magma Tempest. Again, because Magma Tempest cannot crit, it loses out on boosts like Biting, Smoke Cloud, and Grimoire, so it can't hit the max hit as often. Dragon Breath enjoys those boosts so it can catch up. Not to mention that Dragon Breath with Carapax Wrist Wraps is also key for buffing Combust so you may still want to use Dragon Breath earlier or something if you're sweaty enough to bring them as a switch. But don't worry, there's an ace in the hole for Magma Tempest that you most likely didn't even know was a thing. The targeted version of Magma Tempest is actually defensive, meaning you can force an auto attack after using it for more damage. For more information regarding this, give the PVME Discord or website a read in the auto attacks channel. So in a rotation, it can look something like Greater Concentrated Blast to Dragon Breath to Magma Tempest to an auto attack plus Greater Concentrated Blast without any tick loss. Whereas if you replace that Magma Tempest with something like Combust, you'll foretake that and you have to take a tick longer to get back into fighting. That can add up and be advantageous in specific scenarios, and even though foreticking has largely diminished due to greater concentrated blast, it's still very helpful to use and that adds up over time. It's important to note that the direct version introduced yesterday does not have this property at all, so you cannot auto. Instead, 
you'll get one stack of Exsanguinate or Incite Fear, which isn't enough to outweigh auto damage. Do not discount that auto at all, because every bit helps. Moreover, while being 8 hits over time may be worse due to backloaded damage so Sunshine runs out or the boss moves away from it, you can use this to your advantage with either Cinnabanes or God Books, and they will proc like mad. It's much harder to quantify a DPS boost from this, but if that free auto attack wasn't enough, this is enough to keep it ahead in terms of raw power. Also, all the old tech revolving around it still exists, like using it right before somebody spawns to do lossless damage, or using it when the boss is unattackable, so it's still quite useful in that case. And of course, you cannot discount the AoE, which can absolutely still do good work in places where you want that, like Zuck or Elite Dungeons. There's one extra thing worth talking about for non-FSOA users though, and that's Tsunami with Incite Fear. Tsunami gives a 30 second buff where every crit instantly gives 10% Adren, and Incite Fear reduces the Adren requirement for Tsunami. So theoretically, if Mab Tempest crit 4 times, you got bonus 40% Adrenaline. Even without FSOA, Magma Tempest was really good within Tsunami, so you're able to get a ton of adrenaline to do basically whatever you want. With Omni Power also eating up a ton of adrenaline nowadays, Magma Tempest giving you back a lot of adrenaline could let you funnel in more adrenaline to use more stuff like Omni Power and more like Gothic Sath. Just spam that stuff. Obviously, if no more crits on Magma Tempest, that won't work as well, but it's not much to lose as Magic still has so much adrenaline to blow stuff on. It's also a bit tricky to calculate because crit adrenaline is a bit nebulous to convert to damage, and there's definitely a loss there compared to what we used to be able to do now. But when you're still using Magma Tempest because it's still good, that detail doesn't really matter much because, well, you're still going to use it. What else are you going to use? Sonic Wave? So in conclusion, Magma Tempest was hit the hardest with an FSOA. Outside of it, the damage is still reasonable and is the second best magic basic in the game. I get why people reacted so strongly against it due to the double nerf on both crits and damage, but when you actually look at the numbers and consider what you can still do with it, it really just impacts not FSOA users the most, and everyone else won't be hit as hard, even though it is still a sizable nerf on the whole. It's really quite telling that something can be given such insane nerfs and still be good. That being said, the FSOA is an unsustainable problem that has now caused two things to be nerfed, Onslaught and now Magma Tempest. If I had my way, I would drastically nerf FSOA and that would justify bringing back crits for both Magma Tempest and Onslaught. But because FSOA currently exists, having Magma Tempest crit is unjustifiable. But that about does it for this video. Just wanted to put out some information regarding Magma Tempest values and what it's still capable of. If you liked what you saw, do consider dropping a like and comment. And of course, share the video. Maybe even subscribe. Until next time everybody, bye.